Hi, it's Bill the Handyman up here in Northern California. Today we're looking at a uh, sort of a typical uh, refrigerator. And this one is going to be the Kenmore. And so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to lube this fan in here. Then I'm going to clean the... Uh, clean the coils in the back. Now, I may take the compressor out and clean these coils, but what I mainly wanted to show you is an alternative way to clean these coils. These are the coils. This is like the radiator in your car. If these are plugged up, it's basically like your radiator's not getting any cool air. It's not getting any air past it, so it's gonna heat up. So if this is clogged up, it's going to cause your compressor to, to heat up and run very hot and it will shorten the life of your compressor. Uh, electricity uh, runs uh, more efficient when it's cooler, so basically we're trying to keep this whole thing cool. As a matter of fact, I thought about putting uh, mine up on uh, two by fours to just bring it up so there's a little bit more air circulation around it. Uh, but anyway, I just want to show you what you can do to clean it. Uh, now you got to be very careful with these tubes here because these tubes here contain, they're basically, they contain the refrigerant. If you, if you puncture one of these tubes here, or one of these lines here, you're going to have a problem, major problem. Basically, you have, you have a refrigerant leak. This one has the R34A. You'll have a refrigerant leak and to pay a technician to come out and fix it is normally not, not worth it unless you want to spend about two or three hundred bucks to have your refrigerator fixed. So be very careful about these little tubes that are kind of around here. And so uh, the best way to do is maybe get a little toothbrush, which I don't have right now, but just get yourself a little toothbrush and go in here and clean off all this uh, all this lint. Um, you now I have a small dryer brush, which helps a little bit. You can't really get back in there, but you get the idea. But once again, be care very careful about what you're doing because if you puncture one of these lines, you'll be having some major issues. Okay, so. Also, you want to try and clean out any of this other dust around the compressor. And then the fan blades. You want to try and clean the fan blades of any lint. So the lint will be notoriously sticky. I have this little scrubber uh, thing here that fits in there. You could probably clean it with a stiff uh, paintbrush or toothbrush, but yeah. So the cleaner this fan is, the better the air is going to flow around it, through it. It's going to also uh, cool the compressor here. So be, another way you can clean this is basically you get your vacuum, you get the small tip for your vacuum and get it in there and start, you know, turn it on and try and suck out as much as you can. Sometimes the vacuum doesn't have a lot of pull, so you almost have to use some sort of brush or something <clears throat> to get some of this stuff out of here. They actually have coil cleaners that's geared more toward professional kind of stuff, but I've never used a coil cleaner. Um, Anyway, yeah, vacuum, you could use your vacuum too. Okay, so here's a dollar store bottle brush. Works pretty good. Basically, just get in there. And you can sort of get in the little nooks and crannies. So anyway, that's your tip for cleaning out the, the coils. And next, we're going to go to lubing the, the uh, 
evaporator fan in the freezer. Okay, so this is gonna be uh, your fan clean out or your fan lube. So let's uh, take a note on the setting here. The setting should probably always be at the recommended setting. Don't mess with that. Just leave that where it is. And so once you've taken out your screws, there's four of these screws here. Taking those out, you'll be able to pull this out. And if this is frozen up, it's going to be a little bit, bit trickier to pull out. Now this has a plug here in the back, which I'm going to just disconnect so I can pull this out of here. You see the plug here. It'll only go in one way. And so the fan, this is the fan. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna lube it. Uh, the connections look a little bit corroded. You can see it's a little bit corroded here. We're just gonna lube it. Uh, be careful about any of these tubes. You don't wanna puncture it. Puncture them. You'll have a uh, major refrigerant leak and then that would destroy your refrigerator. Um, so, yeah, let's get on to showing you how I lube this. Okay, so, now, here's another, uh, fan from another machine. And you can see that the shaft is accessible through this little hole right here. And some of them are different, some of them are, are similar to this. And this one... Some of them you can't actually access through that back hole. And I think the one in here, you cannot access through that hole. If your fan's not working, basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna have os you're gonna have frost buildup in here. So this one here, it's, you can see it's plugged, so we don't have access to the shaft. Uh, unlike this older style, there's a uh, access to the shaft right there. And then we could stick the oiler down in there to oil it. So on this one here, basically, we have to go in and oil it in, from the inside. So basically we have to tip it and let the oil sort of seep down in there on each side. Now on the front side, you can oil the front uh, and let it seep down that way. So I use this zoom oiler and it's got this really cool long nozzle, which helps out. And I usually put some of the tri-flow inside the zoom oiler. And you know, mix it up real good. And so what I'll do is I'll just take this oiler here, and, uh, and if you get one of these, make sure you keep an eye on that little cap because they seem to disappear. And once they disappear, then you Here's a little place you can actually put it on to save it. If you lose it, then you don't have any cap for your oil, and if the oil falls down, it'll start start seeping out. So anyway, this one here, basically, we're gonna we're gonna try and let some oil seep down in there on that shaft, on that bushing. There's a bushing in there. So, and then there's some felt in there. You want to sort of soak that. Just let it sit like that for a little while. Spin it around a little bit. Now this, this fan is in good shape. Well, theoretically. It actually didn't come on when I first turned it on. So that's why I'm gonna pull it out and lube it. It came on after a bit. After like three minutes, it came on. So it, it's, it probably got stuck because it was been sitting for a long time. So we're just gonna let that sort of seep in there and then we're gonna turn this upside down and then let it seep in the, the bushing on the other side of the rotor here. Just a couple drops. There's not much felt in there to uh, saturate, but yeah, to get the idea. And then after it, we let it sit for a while, we just flip it upside down. And then lube the other side of the bushing. 
Ahead. So that's your tip for today. Thanks for watching. If you need any help, you can contact me at appliancesworks at yahoo.com. If this video helped you, please send me a donation. This Bills Enterprises, PO Box 7021, Eureka, California, 95501. Z underscore F-I-X-I-T-M-A-N at Yahoo. Thanks.